Hi everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how I begin a more complex painting using Photoshop, gouache, watercolor pencils, and illustration board. For this method, I use Photoshop. You'll need to create a new document set to inches. Set the dimensions to whatever the size of the material you're painting on is going to be. So if your canvas is 11 by 14, set it to 11 by 14. For the pixels per square inch option, I used 100 because I like to zoom in a lot and look at all the fine details. So what you will see is this window come up with an empty square or rectangle. And as you can see, there are rulers. When you drag from the ruler, you will see a line that looks blue. That is a guide. So I use these to kind of measure out, you know, everything that's placed on the reference photo. This is my Photoshop photo manipulation. I use Photoshop every day for work, so trust me, I know this does not look cute at all, but that's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it as just that, a reference photo. Once it's all painted and you use your customized color palette, whatever you like to use, that will all meld together into one image and it won't look wacky, trust me. Now, when I start measuring out a painting, you're gonna look at the main subject matter. So in this one, it's a portrait. What I would do first is I would drag a guide down to measure, you know, where are the absolute edges and kind of box it in. Once you do that, you'll put guides along different places, like for instance, where her eyebrows start in the beginning of her hairline. This will give you better reference to the amount of space that's in between those two places on her face. This is really helpful, especially with portraiture because faces can be very easy to mess up if you move something slightly to the left or right, it'll end up making everything look different. And if you want to deviate a little bit from, you know, what the reference photo is, like I said, that's fine. But if you are trying to make sure that something's anatomically correct, for the most part, it's good a good idea to do this. Another reason I like this method is because it teaches you how to measure with your eyes. Rather than doing an actual grid and trying to look at every single square, you're allowing yourself to measure with your eyes a little bit better by gauging the amount of space the face is taking up and then looking at that box and looking at the shape of the negative space between the box and curve of her face. And over time, this will help you with being able to see more accurate. When you go down to each feature, like her eye, her mouth, you're gonna wanna put those into little rectangles or boxes and just repeat the same step-by-step -step process. So once you have your reference photo created and you have it in a document that is set the same dimensions as your canvas or illustration board. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting my ruler and I'm just measuring out where it starts and stops. Now of course I already did my sketch but here I am just showing you how to measure in case you don't know how. Um, <laughs>
So this is an example of what your grid might look like. It's not totally a grid. It's a lot easier than a grid, in my opinion. You can see the lines that measure the distance between her head and the edge of the board, the sides of her nose and where it lines up with her mouth, things like that that will help you to accurately gauge while still exercising your ability to learn how to gauge with your eyes and that's going to be really important over time. So because I'm running low on <laughs> gouache right now, specifically in the color blue, I'm using a watercolor pencil. making the whole base of this painting blue and I'm concentrating more on the outline so that that doesn't get too lost when we blur this mess all together. So after I sketch that out I'm going in with a fan brush and I'm just dampening the entire board. And then after that, I'm going in with some watered down gouache in a purple color. And I'm placing that where I know there's going to be darker areas. So in the folds in the black veil and more towards the bottom as it fades to the background, there's going to be a storm. So there's going to be a lot more shading there as well. And this is pretty much what I do as, not really, I guess, kind of an underpainting, but this is just how I start a painting that's a little bit more complex and sets it up to the next stage, which will be coming up in the next video, which will be on how to color block. I hope you enjoyed this video and if there's other tutorials you guys would like, just let me know what you would like to learn. I'll see you soon. Bye!